What's up guys, Dustin Heiner here with Master Passive Income, and I wanna share with you how you can buy good, profitable income properties. In fact, I'm gonna give you the keys to what is a good, profitable income property, because not just ones that we could rent out, but ones that we can sell in the future that everybody's either gonna to wanna to rent or want to buy, and how you're gonna make money in passive income. The first thing that you absolutely need to remember is to buy good investments do not buy good properties. Now, we don't wanna be spending $500,000 for a property when it's only renting us maybe $2,500. You're not gonna make money because in passive income, you're gonna be losing money because of your mortgage. What we wanna do is buy good investments. Now, a good investment could also be something we have to put money into to fix up, where we force the appreciation up because let's say we clean the carpets, we paint the walls, we put new light switches on, we just make it look pretty, spend about four or $5,000 but it makes the whole entire value go up by 10 or $15,000, so we make money there. So you wanna buy good investments, not good properties. Now let me give you the criteria for a profitable income property, one that is a good investment. Now, these are the properties that, number one, everybody's gonna want to rent. Everybody's gonna also want to buy, and I'll give you an example of actually how these are gonna work out, but they're either gonna wanna rent it, they're gonna wanna buy it, they have low prices to purchase the property, the expenses are low because of how we buy them. Families also desire to live in these homes. There's less amount of maintenance on these properties. Also is less expensive to actually fix up and as well as less expensive to maintain over time. These are the types of properties that we are gonna want to buy. But remember, the number one thing we wanna do is make sure we're making passive income making $250 or more in passive income from every single property. Let me give you the number one type of property that usually I only tell my coaching students, but I will tell you this because you're here with me. You wanna buy a cookie cutter type home. These are the types of home, I know cookie cutter, you might be thinking, what does that mean? These are the types of homes that everybody either wants to rent or wants to buy. These are all over the nation. Now here is really what it comes down to. You wanna find three bedroom homes. Not four, not two, three bedroom homes. You wanna find ones with two bathrooms as well. Three bedroom, two bathroom. You also want the right square footage, 1200 square feet to maybe 15 to 1600 square feet. No less or no more. You also wanna find one with a two car garage as well. And so here is exactly what it's gonna be. Three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, 1200 to maybe 1600 square feet. But then also, these are the properties that everybody is going to want to rent. And so if you stick in that cookie cutter home, three bedroom, two bath, 1200 to maybe 1600 square feet, no bigger, no smaller, and two car garage as well. You stick to that, people are gonna want to either rent it or buy it. Now here are the main keys for buying a profitable income property. And the first one is passive income and cash flow every single month, money coming in your pocket. I love passive income. That's why this is master passive income where I show you how to quit that J-O-B, that just over broke job by investing in real estate rental property so you never ever have to work a job again. So when you get that passive income, you're gonna be figuring out all of your expenses. So add up all your expenses, your taxes, your insurance, your mortgage payment, your property manager fees, any repairs, vacancy factor, you add all of that up. Then you take your income, which is how much you could rent the property for. Expenses minus your income, that difference there is your passive income to where you realize that if you buy one property that makes you $250 a month in passive income. That is $3,000 a year in income, an extra income on top of what you're already making. And if you had 10 properties, remember one, making you $250 a month got you $3,000 a year, 10 properties will make you $2,500 a month and $30,000 a year in passive income. Imagine that. Now, let's just do it one more. Let's say you got 20 properties. That is $60,000 a year in passive income. You could quit your job. That's $5,000 a month. I kid you not, if you got $5,000 a month, you would literally be able to quit your job because no way would you need to work anymore because you have your expenses paid for. So that's passive income. Focus number one on passive income. And the second thing we want to always focus on is equity capture. Now, equity capture, let me explain what that actually is. When you buy a house, if you buy it below market value, you are capturing equity. Let me give you an example. Let's say the normal market value for a house 
is $150,000. But you, as an investor, put a lower offer in and you eventually buy it for $120,000. Well, one hundred and fifty dollars 120000 that's $30,000 in equity captured. That's money back in your pocket. Basically, you can tap, that, tap into that to actually use that to buy another property. And the third thing is that location does not matter. I'll say that one more time. Location does not matter. Now, everybody has heard this, I guess, phrase, location, location, location. That's all real estate's about, location, location, location. Well, we're investors. That is the wrong advice. We're not homeowners. We don't care about that. Of course, we'd rather have in nice areas and really like San Francisco, New York, or someplace that's really going to be really expensive. Yeah, but you're going to be paying out your nose. You're going to be paying so much money to buy those properties. Location, location, location does not matter for us as real estate investors. The reason why everybody needs a place to live and everybody lives all over the country. So as long as people are living inside of a city where you're going to be buying and there are managers that can manage the properties, as long as there are people that can be able to pay rent, you're going to have a good property. So location doesn't matter. And that's what I love to do with all my students, all my coaching students on the Real Estate Wealth Builders. That's the membership that I have, literally giving them everything on how to build a property and do group coaching. I show them that they can invest all over the country. I personally started investing when I was in California. I lived in California in 2006 and I started buying properties in Ohio, Texas, and Arizona. Now I have students that are branching out all over the country, You've got like in Florida, South Carolina, Ohio, um, Indianapolis, Tennessee, Texas, all these other states. I mean, there's so many states that we can buy. These are just naming a few of them. Now, location doesn't matter if you're investing for passive income and cash flow and people are already living there. Another key to a profitable income property is where you can buy a house, put some money into it, and make the value worth more than the value that you put into it, or the money that you put into it. Let me give you an example. Really easy numbers. Let's say you bought a house for $200,000, but that $200,000, you need to put some money into it. You need to put maybe $20,000 into the property. Well, in putting in that $20,000 in carpets, painting, kitchen, all that sort of stuff, you make it worth $50,000 more total. So, you bought it for $200,000. You put $20,000 into it, which means you're into it $220,000. But now it's worth $250,000. You've just made $30,000 in forced appreciation because of the work you put into it. It's beautiful. So if you do that as well, that's another way that you're gonna be making money. Every top of the passive income, equity capture, you're focusing on also having forced appreciation. Another huge thing that you must know is number five is rentability. Can you actually rent this property? Do people really want to rent it? And here is a huge pro tip, a huge key. Now, you'll always hear me say you need to build the business first. Other real estate investors or coaches will say, oh, find a property, run the numbers, buy it, then find somebody to fix it up and then get a tenant in there. In fact, that's the absolute backwards way to do it. We don't do it here at Master Passive Income. What we do is we build the business first. We build the business first so that we know for certain, number one, we have somebody that's gonna manage the property. Number two, we know that the manager is telling us people will rent it. Number three, we know how much we could rent it for because the manager is already renting other properties, very much similar to it, saying, well, you could probably rent it for 1,400. Good, you already know that, let me put that in there. You already have the people to fix it up. You already have everything ready. So if you build the business first, you know you're gonna have the, it's gonna be a rentable property. And you're going to know beforehand how much it's going to cost to fix up because you already have your contractors going through there. That's everything about building your business first. That's something I love to do in all my coaching is showing literally everybody building the business first is the only way really to succeed in this business. Another huge key that you need to know is clientele. What type of clientele that you actually have that are gonna be your tenants? Are they upper class? Are they middle class? Are they lower middle class? Are they lower class? What is the type of makeup of your clientele? And that's something that if you build the business first, you're gonna know that because the experts in the area, the, the real estate agents, the wholesalers, the property managers, they're gonna tell you what type of clientele. The next one is crime. 
after you hit the notification bell, you realize that there are crime here that in every single area you have to account for. Now there is high crime, middle crime, and lower crime, but at the same time, there are things that you need to be aware of. Even some places that have moderately high crime can potentially be okay to, to actually own and have a rental property. And another thing that you need to be concerned about or watch out for are property taxes. Talk to your realtors, talk to your property managers, ask of every single type of tax fee and everything else that you might have. So that's how you're gonna be finding good profitable income properties. You guys are awesome. Remember, hit subscribe, watch this video right here. I'll see you guys and I hope you have great success.